Welcome to Campaign 4, where we'll take a beautiful trip back to Goro. Mm. But we're not doing that yet, per se. We're going we're gonna to learn about our players. We're going to learn about uh, the three victims slash adventurers for Goron. I'm so hot right now. And we're going to start... Yeah. <laughs> we're going to start with Devin. Uh, Devin. Oh, yeah. First of all, welcome back. Hey. You, you, have, you have made a trip around the sun. Not only have you played multiple characters, you've now DM'd. And, and you're back. Yep. And I'm excited to see what you've brought for us. So why don't you talk to me about Kato a little bit? Yeah, so Kato is a Warforged. Wanted to, I'm always trying to do something. To, I think all of our characters are trying to do something different from that we've done previously. And I think you'll see that. Um, I'm not dipping far away from Barbarian from this campaign, the first campaign. I'm going fighter. But as far as character, uh, he's a Warforged. He will be gonna have kind of a couple modes on him just far as as looks go maybe voice at some points uh, depending on what mode he is so there's like a like a friendly mode and then there is a like an attack mode um of sorts and so as far as looks he has like typical armor of a warforged the parts that you're going to be mostly armor is the head the uh chest shoulders forearms and then the legs everything else is kind of that wooden wire mix that you see that warforged have um, the wire and wood mixed is a uh, mixture of a very spe- specific wood that, like Wynn, uh, if you've listened to C1, um, Wynn had a, what was it called? I'm trying to remember the name of the wood. Um, saga wood? Saga wood. It was kind of like a purplish green to it, and so that's kind of what the wooden parts of my Warforge will be. And the armor color is like a bronze, uh, a darker bronze color. Um, we will have a cape. I think it's going to be black. I think we might go with that, that or a purple. Um, so we're still playing around with that. But as of right now, I think of a Warforged, he doesn't have like a mouth that will move. He'll just kind of like, it'll it'll kind of sound will emit from it, I think, in his attack mode. But I think that kind of goes away in a friend mode or a civilian mode. We'll talk about so it kind of gives a, a more approachable appearance in nature. Uh, his white eyes, um, there's like no pupils there. He's a robot. So there's that. Um, I am going to be playing... Uh, a fighter, but its subclass underneath that is going to be the Echo Knight. Seems like a pretty cool thing to play. So we'll try to utilize that as best as possible. Uh, and we're starting at level three. Excellent. I, I'm i eager for all the things. I'm eager for the Warforged. I love the Saga Wood. And I'm excited for the, the crunchiness of... Uh, Goron in campaign four to come back where we talk about mechanics a little bit more. No more six E baby. It's we're back to five E we're, we're bringing it back. (laughs) So let's, let's pick up. Let's, let's start the show. find ourselves outside a small cottage in a woodland area it you can tell that this cottage is offset from another village it's remote enough to be secluded but not far enough away to be desolate Umar's cottage is taken care of you can hear the sound of home you can hear a mother cooking. You can hear a father working outside. But more interestingly enough, we find ourselves inside the cottage, in a room. And we see the tidings of a young man, an adventurer of sorts. A teen with nothing but goals and ambitions. 
journals, maps, books far older than him. And we see this young, somewhat scraggly figure in a thick leather jacket with unkempt hair, long, near to the shoulders, scruff beard, the thin beard that only youth can grow. And we see this young man working on a warforged. This warforged is covered in tan oil smudges, and we can see green wood shavings across the floor. And we can hear sounds of frustration muttering under his breath. And that's when Kato's eyes open for the first time in a very long time. And your vision is filled with this young man, this this young man with his wide smile, the only vision of happiness of months and months of frustration as we watch Declan Derringer welcome Kato into the world. And our young Declan says, Hello, world. Oh, that's your line. I am Ani 5T, onboarded intelligent automaton, searching for immediate threats. Uh, none around here. Uh, Stand by. That's a mouthful. Stand by. But no immediate threat detected. Hurtful, but okay. You, I, I don't know anything about you. Faculties coming online. But you're what? Please select voice modulation Repeat. mode, friendly mode, or hostile mode. Does the voice determine how you're going to act towards me? Please select voice modulation mode, friendly mode, or hostile mode. Friendly mode. And he will, for a moment, eyes go pale again, or go black, and then white again. And he looks at you, and he says, Hello, I'm Kato. Hello, Kato. Welcome back. And he looks around and kind of moves those joints that haven't moved in a long time. Uh, and I think he stands. And he's, he's pretty tall, much taller. He's, he stands about 6'5". Yeah. Taller than Declan, Te- for sure. Declan takes a step back, just kind of in awe of his creation. Oh. I guess not creation, but his work. What are my orders? Well, let's catch you up. I First of all, I'm not your creator. I found you on a highway when I was returning from the docks, and I just wanted to fix you up. So, here's something you should know. I'm not an artificer or a tinkerer. However, what I do know is I've been working on you for a long time, and there's something wrong with your memory banks. I'm not entirely sure what's wrong Mm. or if they're just sealed so i just kind of bypass those i hope that's okay he he rubs the back of his head kind of it's kind of scans like the the fingertips light up as he scans around there do seem to be some modifications though i'm functioning as normal that sounds agreeable that means i did a decent job Indeed. And what do I call you? Uh, You can call me Declan. Declan. Thank you, Declan. You're welcome. Kato, I think... I think we're going to have a great time together. Because... I want to go on so many adventures. And he, like, like, motions to the room. And there's, like, these maps tacked up on walls. There's stacks of books that are like half open and and haphazardly left about as he's been doing his research. Uh, And I kind of walk over to one of the books. I don't know if there's one in particular that like maybe he grabs up. Doesn't matter. And he says, uh, he he says, scanning, flipping through pages. He says, is this our next directive to adventure? 
It is. Adventure is our next directive. Confirmed. Perfect. That was really easy. I don't know why people have a hard time with Warforged. Do people have a hard time with Warforged? That's a good question. I had a hard time repairing you, but I kind of assumed this part would be equally as difficult, and it's not. So I'm pleasantly surprised. How long was I unconscious? Um, for me, I found you three years ago. Hmm. Processing. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that, you woke up much better this time, so that's good news. Well, I think we're going to be the best of friends, Kato. Friendly mode is activated. I'll take it. And he, like, pats, it, pats him on the shoulder. And Kato and Declan spend the next few weeks bringing Kato up to speed on things like mannerisms, uh, a natural tone, though that way it's not as robotic, not as formal, not as programmed. Um, perhaps Kato has taken on some of Declan's lesser qualities as well, but the young Declan has made a friend, quite literally in the sense of the word. And it's in this time that Kato decides that adventure awaits, and the only way to truly find adventure is to go out there and take it. And our, our two adventurers set off. And so time passes as time does, and we see many moons and suns fall, and Goron rotates. And as these months and years pass, one thing is for sure, that Kato is a capable fighter, provided the training, provided that Kato get the training they need. So, Declan works with Kato, and we see flashes of Declan and Kato adventuring through a deep woods. Kato leading the way, clearing branches and foliage, carving their own path through the trees. And these trees, they open up, and we see a large boulder crudely covered, or excuse me, crudely carved into what can only look like a fountain. This fountain is dry to the bones, and there's symbols of a broken horn etched into the back where we would expect the waterfall to be in a fountain. Declan looks to you, Kato, and says, This is it. One of those lost fountains of Simba. Much old, Our much older Declan looks back to Kato, waiting for a response. What do we do with it now? We explore, of course. Of course. We smash cut to Declan sitting on a set of stairs, relaxing, and he takes a big <laughs> crunch out of a, a fruit, and we see Kato is standing at the center of a training area with three Goliaths armed with clubs. And Declan shouts to Kato, You got this, buddy! Remember, use your training! Oh, and don't forget, if you lose, I'm their dinner. And and you're likely going to be the pot that they piss in, so good luck. And he says back, I thought you said this would be difficult, as he is fighting these three at the same time. And we watch as the three Goliaths battle Kato. And do me a favor, Kato, and roll me an athletics check. Uh, that is a 16. That's a pretty decent roll. So we, we watch as Kato fights these three Goliaths, and 
it's almost action movie-esque where Kato will fight one off and then another one will approach and it isn't until all three of them begin to beat down on Kato. Kato, we didn't really mention what your weapon of choice is. What would you describe that for the group? Yeah, so uh, he got used to using some basic weapons, um, you know, swords, knives, that thing, but his weapon of choice is the glaive. Um, he will use that as his main source of fighting. So describe to me how you repel the the, the three Goliaths just hammering down on you. Uh, so I think they are, they've kind of entrapped me in the middle, almost like in a triangle formation. But I like plant the glaive in the ground and kind of like use my body weight to shift up the pole, pounce off the top, bringing the glaive with me, and then land behind one, striking him in the back. Maybe flat with the flat side. And you do so. And you're able to knock that Goliath unconscious. And the fight goes on. And you are eventually victorious, but not without scrapes and bruises and injuries of your own. And as you're, as you're, uh, maybe not panting, but cooling, like, a, a, atop these three Goliaths, Declan, who... By now, you've almost affectionately seen him as a father type. Approaches you and says, That'll do. That'll do. One thing we love at Lawful Stupid, among the other things we love at Lawful Stupid, is spreading the word about your business. Or maybe you want to tell your sweet, sweet grandma that you love her for the world to hear. We want to give you that chance. If you're a business and want to get your services on the air, or just want to tell a loved one a personal message, head on over to lawfulstupid.org forward slash message in a bottle. There you can take around 250 words to say what you want. Business ads are $20. Personal ads are 10 Tell the world what you have to hear with Lawful Stupid's message in a bottle. And our vision shifts once more to a much older Declan and Kato standing outside, standing outside the Derringer estate. And you can see the years have been piled on. You can see that Declan is no longer a teen, but instead a man, a a full beard, not a thin beard, earned and bought and paid for in sweat and blood and time. And we see the two together and it's not familial, it's not joyous, there's a tenseness to it. And Declan says, I understand this is something you want, but Bastonia, do you believe learning from this ghost is worth traveling so far. The doors are open. And we don't know where they are. We haven't traveled as far north here as we can. We've explored everywhere else. But if I don't go and learn these tactics, what's to stop them from coming to our home and doing the same? The time for adventures is past. The time for survival is upon us. And we, we see uh, Declan and Cato standing in front of the Declan estate, which is a three-story house, and it is large. It, you can tell that lots of money and care was spent building this estate. And there's a long, a long uh, pathway leading up to this estate lined with trees. And our two are standing at the beginning of that pathway, or the ex- which would be the exit if you're leaving. Declan furrows his brow. There's always time for adventure and exploration. I just... I don't see how it's your responsibility to go off and fight these wars. There are others. To know to do good and to not do that is evil. And I won't stand for it. 
I suppose we're far past the time where I can tell you what to do. As a friend. As the person who brought you back. I am... Sorry that I have not been able to fix your memories all these years. And while I don't agree with you... And or agree with your choice. I respect that this is something you feel you must do. I'll be back. This isn't forever. I'm just leaving for a little while. Uh, Declan gives him a look that could only surmise his own understanding of his mortality in comparison to Kato's. And he says, with a jovial grin, So be it then. But just remember, if you find yourself lost, go hearthbound. And he hands you a necklace with a golden coin on it. This coin is made up of two rings. The main coin with the Derringer family crest on it. And the second thin outer ring is plain, except for one simple arrow pointing away from the crest. You notice the outer ring spins freely. The Derringer crest is essentially four diamonds in a diamond formation. So if you were to take a diamond, you would have a diamond at the north, west, east, and south um, position. So it's four diamonds that make up a diamond. And there's a small connector between the north, the east, the east, the south, the south, the west, and the west, the north. He will grab that. Um kind of put it like in a, in a like satchel thing he's got that's slung across his chest. Declan will give Kato a hug and usher him off. At, and that, so as they're hugging, he's going to say, searching for immediate threat. No threat detected. Oh, as they give, you wronged me. <laughs> and and uh, Declan will watch Kato walk the long pathway away from the Declan estate. As, a, as all fathers do, they watch their sons go off to build a future without them. Hmm. Then we smash cut once more. Our view changes, and from this beautiful, serene Declan estate in this touching moment... The air becomes frigid around you. Your footsteps crunch as you march through the snow. The chorus of the slow march of you and your band of brothers is interrupted only by the explosion of a tree nearby. Wood splinters and shatter, debris, sawdust, pines, needles. The air fills with this wood and a low guttural roar. <sighs> as a large fiend towers above you with an even larger sword. What do you do? Uh, I think uh, being in charge of the troops that I have, I look back and I yell, We have to kill it now. It's too close to town. But I think also... I'm not as high command as I should be, and I've been ordered to wait for a signal to attack. There's another group of people who know that this thing is is close by, and there's a strategic plan to stop this beast. But I, thinking I know better, tell my troops to go in, and we go in. So this beast, this fiend is above you. It's, it towers above you, this monstrous creature with this feral armor and large sword. So you rush it with, with, with your band of brothers, these three other motley crew. Motley crew is not fair. That's, that's to give them a derogatory sense. These are seasoned fighters. And they, they gather themselves from being ambushed. And together, the four of you charge. And the first strike down comes, and you use your glaive to, to glance it off. Roll an athletics check for me. Oh, I lied. Roll a strength saving throw. Even better. 
Uh, do you get advantage on this? It's um eleven. You the the large blade again wielded one handed by this beast, but large enough for you to be two handed at least. You you use your glaive to glance the blow, and you're able to like force it to your left. But unfortunately. You send that blade right into one of your allies. And you watch as a, a thick cut is made into this human warrior and he falls deep. And, and th- this fiend roars once more, renewed with bloodshed. And it charges forward. What do you do? Uh, I yell, Two behind! I'll draw him forward! Attack him while he's not looking! And I'm going to kind of take fast steps backwards while keeping eyes on the creature. So you're, you're goading it into yes. into attacking you. Yeah, you you're able to push backwards, and, and this fiend chases you. And you watch as your the two remaining allies you have uh, begin to flank, and the three of you begin um, a sparring type of combat where the fiend is attacking and you're dodging, and they're trying to to pierce the 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 armor of this fiend. And this isn't the first fiend by any means since coming to Bastonia. But it is the first fiend you fought alone. Your squad is not meant to take a fiend on on its own. You typically fight in larger numbers, six to twelve soldiers at a time. You feel woefully outnumbered and outgunned. Roll me a strength saving throw. Uh, That's a... 20 and natural. And so you're, you're able to use your speed and your strength and your ability to deflect and assess the battle to keep you and your allies alive. It isn't until you backpedal enough that you're able to come into reinforcements and you see six more soldiers rushing down from the nearby hill and the cacophony of sounds. The, the, the literal music of reinforcements as soldiers cry and their feet can be heard stamping against the ground as they charge this fiend and you watch as this fiend battles against nine soldiers do me a favor and roll an athletics check that is a 19 you're doing real well appreciate that so this fiend swings their blade sideways in a, in a horizontal arc and you watch as excuse me you watch as a wave of soldiers goes down what do you want to do i i see this and i just have a moment of panic and i there's there's a hill kind of has like there's like a uh, like a burrow in it and i run over to that and i hide inside And I okay. grip on to that chain that uh, Derringer gave to me. And you I like I, grab onto it? Yes, and I'm like like rocking inside of this burrow that I've, I've dug myself into to hide. When you do that, the amulet spins, the outer ring spins, and then the arrow points north. So every way you move that amulet, it remains to point north. And you hear the roar and cry of man and fiend alike. It isn't until you hear the guttural roar of something else. Something deeper. Something stronger that I think might goad you out of this burrow. It it feels familiar. You see this bipedal figure, this humanoid figure that is more beast than man at this point covered in a tattered cloak and you see the sheen of its axe as you watch Atlas wield Willow and take the fiend down in one fell swoop and you hear the few remaining soldiers have a meek cheer as the fiend falls
I'm gonna do? come out of my hole, um, and immediately I, I'm, I'm running to kind of where the beast has fallen. Um, and then I imagine the fiend. the fiend, yeah, not not far from him is uh, the, the first friend of mine, first comrade that I, I was trained, I grew up training with in this area or fought with for a long time, uh, Surge. And I, I just kneel down to him. And what do and, you say to Surge, who's on the on the brink of death, who's on his way out the door? I failed you. I failed you all. The beast is slain, but I- I'm I'm so sorry. And Serge looks back at you through blood-stained vision, his face covered in ice, snow, and death, and he says, "I I knew what I signed up for." And you watch as your friend Serge passes on. To the next realm and our figure atlas this more beast than man this vulgar almost depiction this monster of an orc looks at the remaining soldiers nods and sprints off into the other direction where you can hear the sound of combat and the roar of more fiends to come and our scene shifts once more to a gathering of combatants around a large bonfire. Victory. And Kato, you are departing from the group. It's time for you to head home. Atlas has assured you that the group of doors in Bastonia have been closed. What's something you try to do before you leave? I think I, I don't go home. I'm, I'm too ashamed to face Declan um, with what, it, what I've done. I know what I've done, and I let soldiers die. I, in a moment when they needed me most, even if it cost me my own life, I hid. And I can't face him. And so I'm, I'm going to set off to find some other work. Um, on a nearby area perhaps and uh, I think he goes to Oni Apor has several groups of what? before we do that before you you leave Atlas approaches you and without word without conversation he hands you a glaive and this glaive is like wrapped in canvas you can tell it's a glaive just from its shape, but it's wrapped. And Atlas hands it to you with one hand, nods to you, and walks away. Wait, what is this for? Why, why, did, why did you give me this? You hear no response. Is he still walking away? No, oh, yeah, he walks away. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tra- trail him, like seeking answers. But. Uh, Great Atlas, what is what is this for? What what do, what do you want? Why me? I don't deserve this. Atlas looks back at you, grins that big, gro- goofy or grin of his, and this is a grin that you've only seen once before on the day that you joined. And Atlas looks at you and says, "You're gonna make me fucking talk like Atlas." says you'll know when the time comes you'll know what to do with it and he pats you real hard on the shoulder and departs thank you yes so do you unwrap this canvas bag or do you wait yeah yeah, I think absolutely. I'm like wondering why this was different. What I don't know what to do so with you, it when the time is you right. You unwrap this glaive and it is immaculate. The blades on it are fine and they are sharp and it almost looks as it's never been used before, but you can't imagine that to be the case. The hilt of this weapon has beautiful 
burgundy leathers wrapped around it. And you notice that em- embossed in these leather in this leather wrapped hilt are the words Protect Goron as I'd protect you. Signed H F. H F? Yes. That's sweet. I know that. That's so sweet. Uh, confused, I will um, kind of give it a couple spins, feel the weight of it. And it is finely balanced, I think. I think it, it feels really good in my hands. Uh, and then I'll just store it away and turn back toward the camp. So where is the Kato goes next? Uh, I think he goes back home. I think it's it's time to face the music a little bit, and the uh, reunion's coming up anyways. The you know as he's always going back every five years. Uh, family's going to be there. Declan's going to be there, and and maybe he has some some words of wisdom to help me out in this this time of conflict that I have with myself. And and so we do, and and for the sake of timelines, and you're going home early. Uh, the reunion is not scheduled for months at this point, but. You're still making your way. And we see a montage of Kato traveling through snow, boarding ships, bartering his way onto and off of ships. And it isn't until we we finally see the image of Kato walking down the long cobblestone road beneath a corridor of cherry bo- blossoms, fresh in bloom. The petals fall and twirl as Cato walks towards a Derringer estate. The estate stands at the end of this long, well-kept cobblestone path. And on the back side of this, cobble- this estate is a ginge root orchard. You can smell the ginge root. It is nostalgia. It is home. Mm. What do you do? I think I'm going to go to the the training grounds first just to see see if anyone's out there and hopefully not maybe it's just me but I spent a lot of time here and this is it's where I want to be so describe the training grounds to me yeah they are they're, they're nothing special right it's, it's this kind of space that's off by itself um probably half a mile if that on this state from the the main house um but it also is lined with trees that, that go out to it and there's some some seating that has been placed there it's it's a nice as far as the seating arrangements are are made kind of like a smaller arena um but the field is not manicured at all because you know they have horses that are training to ride through here when they're fighting um on steed um and just when there's multiple fights going on at the same time that's just not well kept now there are dummies that are placed around the outside when um when people aren't fighting they're placed inside the field uh, for different strategies when they're shooting arrows um, that kind of thing i think right now it's all cleaned off like it's there's the dummies are sitting around orderly and it's just wide open mixture of dirt and grass Uh, i think maybe there was a fresh rain that had come through so some of it's still muddied uh, so dust is not kicking up at this point as I step out onto this area. You step out onto this muddy training grounds. And you notice that the training grounds is well kept, if unused. If it's been some time since it's seen proper use. What do you do with this time on the training grounds out here alone? I think he's he's sitting on one of the benches to the side for a moment and, and thinking about that fight and what Atlas said. And I think he takes out that um, the weapon he gave him, and he's kind of just staring at those words. And there's something about that that hits home as if I would take care of you. And he's thinking about Declan taking care of him. 
and I think you hear you hear the voice of Declan in your head. Like you you've had so many memories of him, and you hear him say, and it's almost a memory that you have with him when you're first training, and he gives you your first sword, your first sword that is yours that you will use, and and you hear Declan say, every story and every adventure has a weapon with a wonderful name. What would you give this one? Hmm. What will I name you? Kind of picks it up again, and now he's standing. And I think he's kind of practicing the same moves that he usually does. Uh, and he's getting more and more, like, um... What's the word I'm looking for? He's getting more and more intense with the, with these strikes, and he's moving closer and closer to, um, like some of the the practice dummies that are over to the side. And he's looking at one as if it is the beast that he ran away from, and he's suddenly angry with himself and angry with that thing. And from a distance, as far as you can get, one handed does like this spin that cuts the head off. Tired and panting, he says. Mercy's Reach. That's what I'll name you. That's a good one. And night falls as night does. The day tires and the sun begins to set. And I think you go inside and go to your room. So you go you go into your room Describe to me your room, and 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 know that, no. Describe to me your room. It is functional more than anything else. The walls are barren. Uh, they are wallpapered. Uh, they are solid. Mine's a, like a light green color here. Almost kind of matches my like the saga would look. I have. It's kind of a shade off that. Um. There's no bed. There's kind of just like a space where I kind of sit in the corner or could lay down like in the corner. Um, maybe like even a chair more so than a bed would be. Uh, it reclines there and there's like a foot footstool type thing for it. Um, he has kind of a rack for, for different weapons in another corner. Several different types of weapons that he's used. Um, Morning Star sword. He's got some some casings uh, up on the wall from other swords he's used, or or relics that he he's found along the way. A lot of the adventuring stuff they've done together. But there is a a big picture of him and the family, kind of the, the ones that were there early on. Um, I think that's about it. So warforged don't sleep or rest. I mean, they rest, but they don't sleep. Right. So, did you have like a chair, or did you have yeah, like just the chair, the reclining chair, set? the yeah. reclining chair? That's where you would find yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you as you approach your room, two things to be noticed: one, it's well kept. Someone has been cleaning it while you're gone. It's not covered in dust. It's not left unattended. Upon your seat mm-hmm. lays a worn letter with the name Cato scribbled upon it. And as you approach, you recognize your father's handwriting. You recognize Declan's handwriting. Hmm. You pick up this letter and you open it from this worn envelope and you, you begin to read. Dear Cato, when you return from Bastonia, I hope this letter finds you well. I hope you return safe. Every day I worry those years ago would be the last time I laid my eyes upon you. I trust you that this letter finds you, and when it does, I have need of your assistance. While you've been gone, I've ventured onto my greatest exploration yet. I went to Agos. I've been there many years, but I've discovered something extraordinary, something dangerous. I've neglected to share this with anyone outside the Derringer family, for fear that it getting out could cause Goron's next great calamity. Please make your way to Agos, and then Prenneth. Find your sister Vanessa at the Derringer Field Estate in Prenneth. Our family crest is on the front of the building. You can't miss it. 
Vanessa will tell you more once you get there. I'm afraid someone is on to my discovery, and following me. Hurry, son, with all the speed of the wind. Love, Dad. And that's where the episode ends. It was great. I love that. It was good. When do we start episode one? When does that start? Ooh, it's gonna be a minute. Oh, okay, it's gonna be a minute. I'm we, got, we, got, we got two more. We got two more stories to tell before we can venture back to Boron. Great! I can't wait to hear theirs. Be so. A bittersweet arrival of sorts. But Devin, let's mm-hmm. do what we always do and tell our friends our family and our fans we love you we love you bye